Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and before I begin today's video, I just want to give a quick shout out and a big thanks to all the subscribers that have subscribed to our channel. You guys have actually broke through the 1000 subscriber count for our channel. So just want to let you guys know that I really appreciate it and I thank you guys very very much. Now for today's video, I'm going to go through the basic rotation of how you can use the cannons all right, to engage the world boss by the name of Khan okay and um, don't worry it's not gonna be complicated because I'm gonna do this in a two-part series okay this first part that you are actually watching right now is going to be a easy first timer guide on how you can actually contribute to the party without having to memorize tons of mechanics tons of rotation so it's gonna be a very very simple very very straightforward guide for you guys so if you are interested and you want to contribute to your party in the Khan raid okay so just stay tuned and we'll get right to it the first piece of information that I'll provide you guys especially the new players is that Khan is actually a summon boss okay it's not like the other world bosses that you will spawn based on a specific timing but Khan itself is summoned by your guild leader okay as of date and time of the Southeast Asia server only the guild leader can summon this boss so what you would usually do is that you will follow your guild leader on a ship and then from Valia let's say over here at the bottom you guys will be traveling north all right, heading to this island all the way over here near the young sea monster habitat you will reach this island where there's three NPCs okay so this is where you want to go to the next thing you want to know is that once you reach this island that means you set foot on the shore there is the wharf manager of course but however you want to move further up a little bit to this guild manager once you speak to the guild manager, all you need to do is select this guild shop option and then you need to scroll all the way down below and look for this two item, guild monster bane cannon assembly kit. Okay, that's the first item you're looking for. The second item is the guild monster bane cannon ball. So with these two items, your guild members or your guild leader will be telling you guys how many you should be purchasing so you're most probably going to purchase about three to four or up to six depending on how much your guild wants you to purchase and also the cannonball you could be purchasing up to 80 or even up to 160 so your guild members will be the ones that is telling you what to do for this now the money is actually deducted off your guild allowance. So I will have a guild so-called guide, how to manage your guild guide, that will showcase how guild leaders can give you allowance. However, at this point of time, I'm just going to assume that your guild leader already has the ability to provide you with the guild allowances. So the money doesn't come from you, all right? So don't worry about it. Typically, I would suggest if you are a first timer, you can get four to six cannon kit and then the cannonball you can get 80 to 160 it's really really up to you guys so moving on next assuming that i have already bought the cannonballs all right so you will see that i have 160 monster bean cannonball in my inventory i also have four cannons for now all right i also have this black crystal cannonball now in this tutorial I wouldn't go about this because the, I will go, I'm going to save this for part 2 okay because this is a more advanced rotation and I don't want to confuse you guys so moving on next after you have purchased all this item you will turn your screen towards this area where you see a lot of the steps okay so let's move forward over here and what you want to do is go up these steps sometimes you will lose a bit of orientation but it's fine so just keep moving up the steps okay all the way to the top like what I'm doing right now so for the players that already know this just bear with me after that follow this path all the way down you can sprint a little bit okay just sprint and you will start to see this open area this is the area whereby the boss will be summoned in the middle of this so-called water zone itself so what you want to do is just dash forward there's actually a specific area which is by the rocks over here all right so your party or your guild will actually tell you where to position yourself but however just for this demo i'm just going to climb up here 
Now, the first thing you want to do is position yourself near the edges over here. You don't want to position yourself too far back, okay? So for guild leaders, this is the status, all right? When you see the Oculus eye, able to interact means the boss is summonable, but that is for your guild leaders to sort it out. For you right now, as a new player, first timer here, I'll recommend this spot where I'm standing. So the next thing you want to do is that you want to start to so-called set up the cannons. To set up your cannon, you just open your inventory just like this. I'm going to close this part so as not to confuse you guys. Go to the cannon item and right click on it. Once you right click, it will prompt you that installed cannons will be deleted after server maintenance or the siege war itself. You don't have to bother about this, just click yes. And this is the bar over here, which symbolizes the process of setting up the cannon. With the cannon fully set up, the next thing you want to do is to load the cannonballs into the cannon. Now, there's a trick here that I want you guys to actually pay attention for a while. Now, start off by pressing the F5 button on your keyboard, okay? So when you press the F5 button, two inventory opens up. The one on the right side here, this is your character inventory. And the one on the left side here, this is the cannonball inventory. Now, what I always do is that I will push the cannonball inventory to the top. And what I'll do is that I'll go to my Monster Bane cannonball. Okay, not the crystal version. That's not what we're trying to do right now. And for this tutorial, I'm just going to load 20 pieces. Okay. And the next thing I want you guys to take note is this. Do not close this window. Keep this window open, all right? Just don't close any of the inventory windows. Keep them open. Because later on, if you were to close them, you wouldn't be able to reload the cannon unless you so-called dismount from the cannon. That means you get off the cannon. So that's not something that we want to do. Okay, I'll talk more about this later. And the reason why you don't want to dismount from the cannon is because of the stack. A word of caution before we move on to the next stage is that you do not want to load every cannonball into the cannon at one go. Okay, over time, the cannon takes damage on behalf of you. And when the cannon goes down in durability, it will be destroyed. If you have 160 cannonball in the cannon, what will happen is that when the cannon gets destroyed, all the cannonballs will be gone. So you don't want to do that. Usually for demo purpose or even for a new player, I would advise you to only load 20, okay? Just for practice, getting used to it. And that should be sufficient not to ruin everything at one go. So I'm going to show you the whole process, don't worry. So for now, if you are a first timer, just stick to 20 cannonballs per reload. You will do fine, okay? Now, moving on, the next step is to press R on your keyboard so that you are actually mounting the cannon. Now, before you do anything, I want you guys to observe the cannon angle, okay? This is a high angle, all right? So you wanna press Q, okay? Q for queen, Q on your keyboard to lower the angle. So I'm gonna press it right now, three, two, one. Notice that the cannon angle goes down. Okay, so this is where you press Q to lower the cannon angle. At this point, this is very, very important, okay? And I will tell you guys when to lower it. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you the whole rotation sequence so you have nothing to worry about. So first step, lower cannon angle via the Q button on your keyboard. The next thing you want to do is this. I want you guys to observe this portion Okay, this is the gray indicator of the cannon cooldown, which I'll talk about it later. When it is fully in gray, it will mean that you can fire the next shot. And this number basically is the number of cannonballs that you can reference to, but it may not be accurate. Sometimes there is a bug based on the way that we are reloading, so don't depend on this too much. Then the next thing to do is to start firing. Before we begin firing, I want you guys to focus on this icon above the character, okay? Also called above the cannon, whichever you want to phrase it. Now, this icon is extremely important, and I'm going to explain what are the stacks that you want to achieve in 
two separate stages, okay? Two separate stages. Let's talk about stage one. Stage one, you are in normal Canon mode. You look at the Canon, there's no special animation, it's just a fixed Canon, and then this cannonball icon above. Now, I'm gonna hold left click right now, left click held, and you can see this timer bar, it is charging to full power. I'm gonna let go, so it fires the first shot, okay? First shot has been fired, so now, take note of what happens on this icon, okay? You realize that on the top right bot corner over here, there's actually a lit up quarter. This is first stack, okay? The number one stack that we have achieved. Again, I'm going to do a left click one more time. Remember, it's the left click, not the right click, okay? Index finger left click. And I'm firing my second shot. Now, you will see the second quarter being lit up. Okay, the second quarter being lit up. So let me move this angle. It's now clearer for you guys. And always remember, when you do the left click firing, you want to hold it to the maximum. The reason because when I hold it down like this, you can see that the so-called attack arrow is going further and further. So the longer I hold it down, the further it will shoot. There is no right and wrong answer to how long you must hold it, but what you want to do is for the arrow to be able to touch the boss, okay? So now that I fired my third shot, I got the third quarter. And as you might have guessed it now, I need a fourth shot to make it a full quarter. So let's do it one more time. Fire. And what will happen? We have four charges or so-called four stacks. This is where you will realize that you will need to perform an action to go to the second phase, okay? For this second phase, there is two buttons that I want you guys to take note. The first button, I'm going to do it right now. We're going to press X on the keyboard, okay? Once you press X, I want you to check out how the cannon reacts, okay? Three, two, one, X. You will realize that the cannon has this sparkling fire animation, okay? The next thing I want you guys to do notice is this. On the right side of the cannonball, there is this 10 icons over here, okay? So when you see this fiery effect on the cannon, and you see this 10 little dots, you are now in phase two, rapid fire mode, okay? Rapid fire mode means that the cannon cooldown on this left cannon right now is going to cool down faster. That means the radish so-called effects that prevent you from firing is going to go off very fast and turn into a fully gray cannon for instant fire. So at this point, before firing, always remember, each time you transit to a new phase, you must always check your cannon angle. Okay, even if the animation does not reflect clearly, all you need to do is press Q one more time to make sure that the angle goes down. Okay, just always keep that in mind. The next thing, let's go for phase two firing right now. So in this phase two whereby you have the cannonball, the 10 stacks and the fiery effect, you are going to do exactly the same thing as phase one. However, Instead of four quarters of charges, like what I'm trying to fire right now, you only need three, okay? So all you need to remember is this. When you enter rapid fire mode, you get a discount, okay? Just think of it as a bonus round. Rapid fire mode equals a discount. So you don't need four charges, you only need three stack of charges. So I'm just gonna do the firing right now as normal. This is another left click. As you can see, the firing interval becomes shorter because we are in rapid fire mode. Now, here is where it gets very important. You notice that right now, I have three charges over here. Also, the yellow dots are depleting. You don't really have to worry about this. Just pretty much ignore this. Just know that when it is there, you are doing rapid fire firing. And what happens is this. You got three charges. This gives you enough firepower to do a 50 times damage attack. And that 50 times damage attack is called the overcharge shot, which you can look at this icon over here. It's a right click for overcharge shot. So in rapid fire, three quarters, do a right click and hold it. All right, and you will do this rapid fire overcharge shot. 
So this burst of cannon attack actually has a 50 times damage and when you hit the boss with that, you actually see the boss HP drops quite a fair bit. Alright, so if you realize what another thing is this, now that we have done the overcharge shot, the stacks all disappear, okay? But we still have this rapid fire mode, you still see this animation, you still see this icons over here. So what you want to do is resume the left click fire, just resume the left click fire. So I'm just going to fire the shot again, one shot. When I do one shot, I gain one charge. I'm going to do it one more time, second shot. As you notice, because I'm in rapid fire, this cooldown over here, it recovers very fast, you see, it's almost instant. So I'm going to do a third shot. Okay, this is my third shot. So just remember, as long as you have this dot still on your screen, on the third stack, you want to do a right click right now, which is a overcharge shot. So this is the big gun that will give 50 times damage. I can be wrong, it may not be 50, but let's just assume it's 50 times, okay? Let's just give it a number so it's easier to remember. So at the end of the day, you will continue this rotation until these dots disappear. So basically right now, I only left two dots, right? So I'm just gonna shoot normally, okay? Just gonna do a normal shot, left click, one charge, left click again, second charge, okay, take a look at the 10 dots over here, they are missing now. So when the dots are missing and my cannon is not actually in a so-called fiery effect, what I need to do is just resume my first phase. First phase is four charges because there is no bonus round to it. Okay, so just remember this. So I'm going to repeat the whole process right now so that you guys get a hang, but I'm just going to do it in a faster way. So I'm not going to charge the cannon to full. I'm just going to release it very, very fast. So now that I have gone back to four stacks on the normal phase one, it's time to press X again. So the moment I press X, I enter rapid fire mode. This 10 stacks comes back in and you should know it by now. When you're in rapid fire mode, your so-called um, stacks required is discounted, so you only need three stacks. Whatever you do, press Q first, all right? So left click one time for one stack. Okay, the cooldown is almost instant after the shot has landed. Left click again, second stack. and then wait for the cooldown, left click again for the third stacks, okay? So just take note, we are in rapid fire mode because of the 10 icons and the firing effect on the so-called cannon. So now we can do a overcharge shot, which is a right click. So this is the high damage, as you can see, it just smokes the screen totally, that's the difference. And look at the right side over here, you still have the rapid fire mode indicator here, so continue. Just continue to do your normal left click shot. I'm just going to do it one quick one right now. Now, you realize nothing is coming out right now? That's because if you look at the inventory of the cannon over here, it's empty. Here's the trick that I told you guys about just now. Once you decide to keep these two windows open, all you need to do right now is right click the cannonball, key in another maybe 20, and the cannonball gets reloaded. Now all I need to do is press Ctrl to so-called hide my cursor, and I can left click and fire again. Okay, so again, I'm in rapid fire mode. I'm just going to fire left click. So I'm going to do my second left click right now. And again, the last left click because I'm in rapid fire mode. All right, this is a bonus round. I don't need four stacks. So at this point of time, I have three stacks and I can do one more overcharge shot with my right click. So I got to make sure that I make this count. And the sequence repeat. You will realize at this point, you would have two stacks. 
Okay, two little rapid fire shots left. So you want to repeat the whole sequence again just by doing the left click. So shot number one. And you will notice this is the last rapid fire shot that I have left. Shot number two. So the rapid fire mode has gone off and my cooldown is going to take slightly longer. See, it will take slightly longer. Okay, I'm going to do shot number three. Just take note that when you can't fire and you still have cannonball, that is because your cursor is on the screen. So you're going to press control to hide the cursor in order to make the shot. So at this point of time, I'm in the normal mode. You don't see the rapid fire. You don't see the animation. So I definitely need my fourth charge. And at somehow at this interval, depending on how fast your guild is actually taking down the boss, there is a point of time where all your guild mates will say everybody fall back. Okay, that is because there are two intervals where the boss will actually do a massive AOE attack. Okay, it's a massive attack which you will want to do the following. So when everybody says fall back, fall back, fall back, all you need to do is press the S button on your keyboard, roll backwards, all right, just roll backwards all the way down and just hide here behind. But you have to make sure that you are on the sand, okay, on this sandy part. You can move towards a little bit. Some players will suggest that you actually hug the stone, all right, just hug the stone like that. But the most important thing is actually be over here, near the sand, on the sand itself, because the boss attack will be so-called wave out all throughout this island. And behind this rock is where you want to stay protected. So just wait until the boss finishes its attack. Then all you need to do is roll the cannon over to the left side over here. Okay, this is a slow process, so just bear with me a little bit. And you want to find a portion where you can anger the cannon and roll it back up. Okay, and stay here. Repeat the whole process again. So that's pretty much it. So here are a few key pointers just for you guys. Number one, when you are a new player, doing this for the first time, there is a high chance that your guild mates already know the full mechanics, okay? There are a full range of mechanics whereby there are people who are doing DPS, there are people who are killing monsters to get you crystal cannonballs, and there's a lot of things going on. But for a new player, don't be intimidated by everything, just focus on your cannon rotation, okay? And that is how you contribute very well to the rest of the party, by hitting the right click over charge shot at the right time. Now, the first thing you want to do is this. During this process, keep all your pets. You realize that even in this demo, I have the habit of keeping all my pets, okay? So you want to keep all your pets because you don't want your pets to pick up the cannonball as you want those who are more experienced to be able to pick it up and use it at the correct timing. So trick number one, do not have your pets active, okay? So just store them away first. The second tip that I will give you guys here is this. Do not be afraid each time the boss launches an attack on you guys, okay? Because as long as you're mounted on a cannon like this, okay, you're using the cannon, the cannon is the one that is absorbing all the damage. You will not get hit, so don't worry about it. And the only one damage that is so big that you must hide away is the one that I will show you right now in the next clip. All right, I'll just let it cut to the next clip. So you will see this message going on. Then that's the point where all your guild mates will be shouting, fall back, fall back, just go and hide or something like that. That's the only one that you need to hide. The rest of the normal attacks by the boss, by the mobs that's flying around you guys, you can literally ignore because the cannon's gonna take the damage. This is how easy it gets, okay? So that's the two tip that I have for you guys just to make it easier so that you focus on the correct thing and you don't get distracted by other stuff. So the next need to know item is that once you finish, let's say killing the boss, you guys have successfully so-called down the boss itself. We want to click your pet list and you want to bring out all your pets. Okay, you want to bring out all your pets. The boss will be dead in the center of this whole water region and you want to swim towards it. 
So don't just think that the boss is dead. You guys can literally log out or walk your way to the ship. No, you have to swim towards the boss and make sure that at the middle of the screen, you start collecting the loot. Okay, the loot from this boss, that means the rewards are actually individual. So every one of you is going to get something. And if you get the heart of Khan, then you will be a very wealthy guy for the time being. Now, um, in my next guide, I'm going to teach you guys how to use this black crystal cannon. Okay, this black crystal cannonball is going to deal even more damage at the right time. But for today, I'm not going to do that because it's going to be very, very complicated. So for the time being, practice what you have learned from this guide. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up like to help support the channel because the thumbs up like is actually more important than a subscribe. Where else the subscribe button lets you stay tuned to this channel so that whenever I release a new guide like the part two for this coming guide, all right, on how to use the crystal cannonball, you get the notification bell. The more important thing is actually to click the notification bell icon and set the status to all so you don't miss any of my videos. So remember, the last thing is as always for the regular members of this channel, you already know, always click the description because I will always update the description with more tips, more tricks, and more experiences shared by all our viewers. So the description is as important as the guide in this video. And without further ado, I'm just going to pretty much end this video here. I hope you guys had a great time and have learned something out of this video. If it helps, please give it a thumbs up. And that will be all for today's video. Bye-bye.